Peter called, wakes me up in the middle of night. At 12,000 feet above the sea level, the temperature can plummet way below zero in no time. At this altitude, doing anything takes extra effort. And this is why, very slowly, I try to put my boots on. Once I leave the sleeping bag, my extremities will get cold very quickly. The next thing I will try to do is to put on this little stove over there. I'm very dehydrated. And this pristine mountain cold air that is around me makes this process even more efficient. You might be wondering now, what insanity drove me over there? Why would one trade a comfort of a warm wooden bed for this tiny stretch of material that separates my soul back from the thick glacial ice beneath me? What is the rationale behind waking up in a small tent surrounded by intimidating mountain landscape? Let me explain. I came to this desolate place as I was looking for a retreat from a fast-paced existence in a big city. I came looking for adventure, but I found something that completely blew my mind, something that I never thought would exist. The word of clearance there is sky above me. Ladies and gentlemen, since the dawn of the time, we've been turning our heads to the starry sky above us. We have worshipped it. We have feared its cosmic power to ultimately try to study it and understand its secrets. For centuries, our ancestors, with the tools available to them, were trying to copy tiny patches of the starry sky above us and incorporate them into their art, into their culture. And although so many centuries have passed, we still live under the spell of the starry skies and distant galaxies. What has changed, however, is the degree to which we can observe all these amazing things that happen above us. <coughs> Our natural curiosity has driven development of amazing man-made observation instruments, telescopes. More importantly, great developments in material sciences and optical physics led to creation of this tiny, very popular apparatus, a modern camera. A middle price DSLR can perform imaging operations which are on par when it comes to quality and sensitivity to devices which were used by national space agencies only 15 years ago. And this is why night photography is not any longer a domain of very finely tailored group of individuals with scientific degrees and the big telescopes. It is an activity which can be enjoyed and practiced by everybody in this room. However, even with the best tech on your side, night photography does have a reputation for being a challenging technique. And addressing the challenges and providing the solutions is the idea worth spreading over here. So let's break it down. Whether you are an astrophysicist or adventure photographer as I am, you are a subject to the very basic laws of physics, which pretty much define the optical perception of the surrounding world. It is not the technology, but understanding what happens around you that is the key in developing night photography skills. I believe that these factors, which truly go far beyond the technical advancements of your camera, are light pollution, location and time. Let's start with the light pollution. I think this is pretty much the most obtrusive and harmful factor which will influence your photos. What is artificial light pollution? Well, it's actually this misdirected radiation which obscures the celestial bodies. And unfortunately, our big cities emit a lot of light. And I'm pretty sure that this slide provided by NASA nails it down very well. So this is just a projection of artificial light sources on the surface of the air. When we zoom in, zoom in I'm sorry, we could even identify separate big agglomerations in the cities in the US. Keep the lights on in the city and you will see very little. This is, ex this is a snapshot of a place where we live, Courmayeur, in Aosta Valley in Italy. Turn them off and a completely different world will emerge. So as you can see, artificial light pollution can be completely decremental to your photography. 
But there is one more light pollution source that you always need to pay attention to. The one that we very often are completely in love with in our photos. That's the moon. For guys like me, having a moonlight is a blessing at night. Because I'm an adventure, I love to venture through the highly crevassed glaciers at night, and that gives me a perfect visibility. <laughs> However, for photographer, intense moonlight, which is reflected by snow-covered mountains and glaciers, will wash out and completely overexpose your photos. So, what's the solution? Is it buying next another super high-resolution camera, yet another very expensive lens? No. The solution is to con consult the lunar phase. So basically, look into a lunar calendar and pick your shoot around the new moon phase when the moon illumination is at its minimum. As you can see, avoiding light pollution is far more important than using highly sophisticated cameras. And this is why the next point that you always have to keep in mind is your location. Let me start by saying that you really want to get high on your adventure. The higher you are, the better. Why? The higher you are, the thinner the air above you. Less particles, which will capture all these photons that are coming from distant celestial bodies. Is this my invention? No way. This is a commonly known fact which has driven development of large facilities, like Alma facility on that, in Atacama Desert. Because over there, the air is dry and very thin. This is the very same reason why me and my partner go to this crazy desolated places when we set up a small base camp, because they are far away from artificial light sources, and they also are high enough to give us a clear overview of the starry sky above us. So let's rec recap very quickly what have we learned in so far. We have learned that staying away from artificial light sources, paying attention to the moon phase, and really importantly, trying to get as high as possible is definitely a, something that will get you there as far as night photography is concerned. But there is a one more piece of the puzzle missing. The most secret and perpetual property of our world. And this is the time. To take a good night photograph, you need to wait very finely defined amount of time. This amount of time defines the quality of your photo. Wait too short and you will see very little. Why? Because there will be no time to capture the photons flowing from the stars to your camera. Wait too long, on the other hand, and you will see this completely washed out photo, because you actually acquired too much information that adds to the noise and overexposure. So what's the remedy? What's the solution? And please pay attention now. The solution is you. The solution is the choice you make. And the solution is imagine yourself experimenting in the field. Experimentation, that's the key in night photography. Go into the field, select an initial exposure value, increase it, decrease it, and look at the outcome. It will take you no time to realize a single night photograph can tell an amazingly broad story in a very focused way. Like on this photo, a story of adventure, of human spirit, a story of nature. More importantly, night photography can be used as a positive agent in understanding the challenges and opportunities that we face in our daily life. We live in information-driven society full of anxiety, it's very easy to start feeling very lonely in such a society. I have absolutely no doubt that the calming beauty that radiates from the starry sky above us, the adventure element that is always associated to going there and taking this photo, boost of confidence that comes from understanding that it's not camera, but me, my imagination, my experimentation yields that photo, will put you back on the right track. Ladies and gentlemen, as Vincent van Gogh said, for my part, I know very little, with any certainty. But the sight of the starry skies above me makes me dream. Thank you.